So now that we have verified that SQL Alchemy has created the proper tables within Postgres, it's time to go ahead and create our first query. And like I mentioned in a previous lesson, with SQL Alchemy or really any ORM, the way we do queries is going to, little bit, is going to be a little bit different. We're no longer going to rely on regular SQL. Instead, we're going to use basic Python methods. Uh, and so go to your main folder, uh, sorry, your main file. Right? And we, we saw this uh, test uh, route that we defined. So what we're going to do is we're going to run our first query within this test route. And then afterwards, we'll, we can go ahead and delete it. And then we can update all of our uh, pre-existing path operations. And so like I mentioned before, uh, anytime you want to perform any kind of database operation with SQL Alchemy uh, within FastAPI, we want to make sure that we pass it as a parameter into our path operation function. So you just call DB. So we're saving it inside a variable called DB. And then we're just calling the session object. And then we're calling the getDB function within depends. So this makes it a dependency. And so if you already forgot what that is, um, just go to your database. Uh, you can see that it's this function right here. So this is going to actually create a session towards our database uh, for every request to that specific API endpoint. And then it's going to close it out once we're done. Right? And then within main, there's one thing that we have to import, and that is models. So you just do from dot import models. That's going to import this specific model so that we can actually make queries to it. Right? And to make a query, right, we're going to access that database object, which is getting passed into um, our function. And then here we want to tap into the query method. And then we have to pass in the specific model for the table we want to query. We only have one model in this case, which is our post model. So that when we use this specific model, it's going to allow us to make a query to our post table. And here, so we'll call models dot post. So that's going to allow us to access that model. And then from here, what we can do is uh, we have a couple of different methods that we run can run. But since we want to query all of our posts, we just do all. So this is going to grab every single entry within the post table. And then here we could just save this as a, a variable called posts. And then for the return, return statement, I'm just going to say we're going to return data and then posts. So let's test this out now. And uh, I'm going to go to get posts. Actually, I'm just going to create a new test um, test route, so a new request. And I'm just going to copy the URL. And then this is stored in SQL Alchemy. So let's try this out. And this should result in us getting just one post. So let me just double check my Postgres database just to make sure that we only have one post. So I'm just going to open up the query tool. And we'll just do select star from posts. Yep, and it looks like I only have one post. And so that's why we only got one post in our request. And if I add a new post, and save that, and we make a new request, we should get two posts. So that verifies that we are successfully connecting to our database and we are successfully retrieving those posts. And so I want you to stop and really take a look at how the queries um, vary when it comes to working with an ORM versus working with regular SQL. Um, because if we actually see the uh, path operation for getting posts uh, at slash posts here, this is where we're using regular SQL. So here we do select star from posts. But if you take a look at this, there's no SQL here, right? We're just tapping into the database object and we're going to call a query. And then from here, we have to tell it what specific model, which in this case, remember, these models represent tables. And then we just say, I want all posts. Now, what's even more interesting is if I remove this, and then uh, for now, I'm just going to hard code, you know, successful, just some random data. I'm going to do a print posts. So right here, we're calling the database object, and then we're calling query. So what actually happens when we just do this? Well, I'm going to save that. We're going to send a request. We're not going to get any data back. That's to be expected. But take a look at this. Right? We're actually taking a look at what the query object returns. And you can see that it's just returning a regular SQL statement. So it's saying, I want you to return post.id, and then it's just renaming it post underscore ID. Then I want to grab post.title. We're renaming it as post.title. So it's grabbing all of the columns. And then we're going to grab it from our post table. So it's really no different than just running, you know, select 
star from posts, essentially. That's all it's doing. But it's just renaming all the columns to be a little bit more easy to read. So you can see that these queries, this query object is just performing SQL. So it abstracts all of the SQL away from you and it handles all the logic of generating the SQL so that you don't have to know or you don't have to have as solid of an understanding of SQL. And this allows you to really focus on uh, building out the API. This allows you to focus on uh, working with Python and less with SQL and the databases themselves. So now we know when we call query, this actually creates the query. However, to run the query, we have to run a specific method. So there's a couple of methods that we can run, um, but if you want to grab everything, then you just call all, and then it's going to take this SQL query, and then it's actually going to run it against the database and then return it. But until we call this last method, it's nothing more than just a SQL query that hasn't been run yet. All right, so now that we know how to fetch all posts, let's just go down here, all right, and let's just put in this logic. So um, this is our actual endpoint for retrieving posts. This is our get posts. And what we're going to do is I'm going to comment this out just so that, uh, uh, you know, later down the road, if you guys want to just take a look back how you do it with regular raw SQL, you still have that within the code base. And anytime you want to work with the database, remember, you have to pass it in to the path operation function. So this is going to make it a dependency. And you'll see by doing it like this, it'll make testing a lot easier. And then we can just copy this right here. And then we're going to return the post. So let's test that out. So now if I go to get posts, hit send, you can see that we successfully retrieved both of our posts. All right, and it really is as simple as that. Uh, and then in the next video, we'll start taking a look at how we can create posts and so on.